I am Luis Anthony Ast, the Video Math Tutor, and welcome to Solving Linear Inequalities. Now, before we get started, please go over the material in Basic Math, Lesson Number 2, Equalities and Inequalities. Also, the Algebra Lesson, Solving Linear Equations, both parts. Now, let's get started. An inequality is a mathematical statement in which the equal sign is replaced with an inequality symbol. Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater or equal to, not equal to. The not equal to symbol is typically not used very much. To solve an inequality, you must find all values of the variable, or variables, that causes the inequality to have a true value. These values are solutions. Typically, inequalities have an infinite number of solutions. Determine if the value of the variable is a solution to the inequality. To do this, all you need to do is substitute 1 in place of the x in the inequality. So let's do that. First, we'll set up a template. So something plus 2 is that less than, I don't know, 5. Put 1 in place of the x and simplify. 1 plus 2 is 3. Is that less than 5? It sure is. It checks. So now let's write down the formal answer. Answer. Let's say yes. x equal 1 is a solution. Let's try another one. I want to determine if y equals 11 is a solution to this inequality. How do we do it? Well, like before, we're going to rewrite this as a template. 3 minus something greater or equal to negative 7? I don't know. So I'm going to replace the y with 11. Let's go ahead and simplify. This is going to give me negative 8 is greater or equal to negative 7. Well, negative 8 is not greater than negative 7. This is not true. Hmm. So how do we formally answer this? We'll just say answer y equals 11 is not a solution to the inequality. Let's do one more of these. I want to determine if a equals negative 2 is a solution to this inequality. How do we do it? Well, like before, we're going to rewrite this as a template and replace the a with negative 2. And let's see if this works. We don't know yet. Let's evaluate. Let's simplify. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Is that less than or equal to negative 8? Yes, yes it is. So to answer this, a equals negative 2 is a solution. You can just write that, or you can just continue the sentence. Is a solution to the inequality. Let's go ahead and we we'll box this, and we're done. Determine which sample values of the variable are solutions to the inequality. 
Now to do this, all you need to do is replace the x in inequality with each of these values. Let's do x equals 0 first. So as before, we're going to create a template. Replace x with 0. And we need to know, is this greater than 5? Simplifying this, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. Is that greater than 5? No. So x equals 0 is not a solution. Now let's do the next value of x. Let's let x equals 4 now. I'm going to put 4 in place of the x in here. Now, is this greater than 5? I don't know. Let's go ahead and simplify this. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 3. Is that greater than 5? Oh, so 8 minus 3 is 5. Is that greater than 5? No. 5 is not greater than 5. 5 is equal to 5. Therefore, we can state that x equals 4 is not a solution. Now, before I do the last one, I want you to try it first. So go ahead and pause the video, try it out, and then press play to see me do it. Now, let's see if you got it right. I'm sure you did, but let's do it anyway. I'm going to create the template for this. And I'm going to let x equal 7. Is that greater than 5? Let's find out. Uh, 2 times 7 is 14 minus 3. Is that greater than 5? 14 minus 3 is 11. Is that greater than 5? Yes. So let's go ahead and write down a formal answer to this. Seven is a solution to the inequality. Now, I don't say seven is the solution because there's actually an infinite number of solutions to this. So you just say seven is a solution. A one variable linear inequality is an inequality that can be placed in the following form. AX plus B is greater than zero. Where A and B are constants, X is the variable and A is not equal to zero. Be aware that the other inequality symbols may be substituted in place of the greater than symbol in this formula here. The graph of a linear inequality is the set of all points on the real number line representing the solution of the inequality. Before I go over the number line graphs of basic linear inequalities, I want to first talk about this handy little table of information. If we have inequalities versus strict inequalities. For inequalities less than or equal to or the greater or equal to symbol, you see those, you're going to use a solid dot or solid circle on the number line. For the interval notation, you're going to use square brackets or brackets. For strict inequalities, the less than or greater than symbols, when doing a number line graph, you're going to use a open dot or open circle. You're going to use parentheses. Now, in some countries, these are called brackets, but I won't. Parentheses. 
sometimes we have to deal with infinities, either negative infinity or positive. If that's the case, you're going to use parentheses with the infinities when doing the interval notation. Let's go ahead and start off with x is less than a. x is just an example variable. You could use any other one if you like. How can we create the number line graph? Well, first, create the number line, a little tick mark, and then put the number that was given to you, in this case a, a represents a number. And according to our little table of information, if you have a strict inequality of less than, you should use an open dot. So I'm going to place a little open dot right above the a. Now, how do you shade the number line? Well, we want x's to be less than a. Values that are less than a are to the left of a. So if you had a pen or a marker, you can just mark and shade to the left. I'll just use this little arrow I came up with. And that represents all values of x that are less than a. Let's go ahead and create the interval notation. With interval notation, you would use parentheses or square brackets. Which one? Ah, we had an open dot, so it's a parenthesis. Now, you always go from left to right when you're doing an interval notation. It starts off over here. You look at the shaded part of the number line. This is going forever to the left. It's going to negative infinity. That's where we start. And we always use a parenthesis when dealing with infinities. That's where it starts. It ends right at A. Does it include A? No, it's an open dot. It's just less than but not equal to A. So we would use a parenthesis. So we're going to close the interval. Now, let's go ahead and create the set notation, which is very easy. It's pretty much based on the inequality notation. So you're going to create a brace right here, and you're going to write down the set of all x's such that, that's what that symbol means, such that, and just write this down. x is less than a, and then close the brace. Before we continue, I want you to be aware of an alternate number line graph notation. For the problem we just did, this is what it would look like. In place of the open dot, a parenthesis is used. If you happen to have a situation where you have a closed dot, a square bracket is used in its place. So be aware of that while watching this video. When I use an open or closed dot, your textbook or your math instructor may have you use a parenthesis or a square bracket in its place. Here's our second graph. x is less than or equal to b. So you mark b on the number line. It's less than or equal to, so you use a solid dot. And think of this as pointing where you want to shade. So you want to have x to be less than B, so you shade on the left. The interval notation, you always go from left to right. It's at negative infinity, and it stops at the value B, which represents some arbitrary number. And it's solid dot, so we use a square bracket. For the set notation, it's the set of all x's such that, let's write this down, x is less than or equal to b. x is greater than c. On the number line, mark the c, put an open dot. It's greater than, so you want to shade to the right of the value. Interval notation from left to right, it starts at c. It's open dot, so you're going to use a parenthesis, and it goes forever to the right to infinity. And you always use a parenthesis with infinity. Set notation, 
set of all x's such that x is greater than c. x is greater or equal to d. On the number line, mark d and make a solid dot because it's greater or equal to, include it. It's greater than, so you go to the right forever. Interval notation, you start off at d because you go from left to right. There's nothing over here, nothing to write down. Oh, right here you start. So d, it includes it and it goes to infinity. Infinities always use a parenthesis. Now you might say, well, if you always use parentheses, then what's the bracket doing here? Well, that's fine. The bracket's not with infinity. It's with a D. So keep that in mind. Set notation. Set of all X's such that, just copy that down, X is greater or equal to D. Here's a slightly different inequality. We have X is in between A and and b. That's how you would read this. How would you create the number line graph? First, draw the number line for a couple tick marks that's going to represent the a and the b. These are strict inequalities, so they're going to be open dots. So let's place one here at a, and let's put another one here at b. How should we shade the number line? Well, here, x is in between a and b. So it's all the values on the number line that are in between a and b. So let's go ahead and just shape everything in between. So that's something that looks like this. Now, how do you create the interval notation for this? Well, again, you go from left to right. You start at a but it's an open dot, so you're going to use a parenthesis. And it's all the value until you reach b. And you don't include the actual b value, so you use parenthesis. Set notation is the set of all x's such that, and then you just go ahead and just copy this down. And you would read this, x is in between a and b. You would read this as x is in between c and d and includes c. The number line graph is as follows. It's all values between c and d. It includes the c, so it's a closed dot. It does not include the d, so it's an open dot. Interval notation, very easy. Let's go from left to right. It starts at c. It includes it, so it's a square bracket. And it stops at d and it does not include it. Set notation is the set of all x's such that, and then just copy this down. And you would read it, it's the set of all x's such that x is in between c and d and includes c. This inequality says that x is in between e and f and includes f. The number line graph looks like this. It's all values that are shaded between E and F. You do not include E. You do include F. Interval notation, you start at E. Don't include it, so it's a parenthesis. You stop at F, and you do include it. So you use a bracket. Set notation, you just do what we've been doing beforehand. It's a set of all x's such that x is in between e and f and includes f. Here we have x is in between g and h inclusive. You use the word inclusive when you include both endpoints. Number line graph, from g to h, it includes both endpoints so they are those dots and you shade everything in between the two points. Interval notation, since they're both closed dots, we're going to use square brackets. 
We start at G and it stops at H. Set notation. Just go ahead and copy this down like we've been doing beforehand. This should be easy for you now, right? It's the set of all X's such that X is in between G and H inclusive. For the last basic graph, I want to talk about the situation where you want all values on the number line. Well, there is no inequality notation for this. However, for a number line, just draw a number line and then just shade everything. For the inner notation, realize that, well, we're spanning all values from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's what we're going to write down. It's from negative infinity to positive infinity. And don't forget, infinity is always used parentheses. That's why I have that here. What about the set notation? Well, this is what we're going to write down. It's the set of all x's such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. At this point, I highly recommend you take the time to print up the following document. This is student number lines number three. You can find this at my website, videomaththeory.com. It's free. It's also located in the PDF folder on the DVD-ROM section of this lesson.